Welcome to Culmination, where we're not experts, but we sure have a lot to say. In the process of becoming our best self, I have with me my co-worker Joseph Matthews to discuss power. And with that, let's get started. So, let's just make this simple. What is power, and how would you define it in terms of how we're going to be talking about it in this video? So I see power as, like, authority versus being able to, like, fend for yourself against people in an argument. Or, it's, it's hard to define. It's about not being so shy that you let people walk all over you and stuff like that. Okay, so kind of like standing your ground, almost like assertiveness, or just knowing the limit of when you need to speak up for yourself or something. Exactly. Okay, so can you give me an example? And let's start it off simple, like a relatable example to your life. Well, we're all still in school, or kind of in school at this moment. And <laughs> when you think about group projects, there's always this power dynamic. Who, number one, will be in charge and leading everyone? Who's going to be the one who offers to help but really would rather not do it? And who is <laughs> going to be the lazy one that you have to force to do anything to get credit? Mm -hmm. It's just an interesting dynamic because... Really what we're going to touch upon on the, in this video is how power is prevalent everywhere. And it's weird how your teacher says, all right, we're going to divide into groups now. So then all of these groups form, like usually your friends just find, find you and your other friends, and then you form a group. And then naturally, just this power dynamic takes place automatically. Like in the roles you just described, isn't that weird how they just take form almost instantaneously? It is weird, but the benefit of having friends in your class is you already know who is a good worker, who's fun to have around, and who can you carry to make them feel better. Versus when the teacher makes the groups themselves and puts someone hardworking with a bunch of people who are lazy, and you yeah. are forced to do all the work. That happens more often than it doesn't, and that's when you get stuck with this power dynamic. Yeah, and that's interesting because it's like an outer force intervening with the almost the natural order of things. Like you already made your connections, you already understand who is compatible. Like even when they're not your friends, it's like, oh, uh, Jimbo over there is a complete slacker. He's over there picking his nose, and you know, <laughs> I don't, I don't want to work with him. Uh, but when you're assigned with them, how does that work? You you expressed how it creates this unnatural situation, but how does the power, like, can you just describe the power going on, like, from that unconscious level? So in my experience, it has almost always gone like this. We get together at the table, we open our laptops and look at the assignment. No one says a word for about five minutes to like give time to read, and then again, no one talks. So eventually, someone, usually me, will get so frustrated that no one's doing anything that you have to like, okay, here's what we're going to do. And then you start divvying up like as who's going to look at you, then you know that they're going to work if you need them to. People who are still looking at their laptop and like biting or pinching their lip usually, they don't want to do anything. How do you how do you work with that though? Like when you know that somebody obviously doesn't want to work with you, what do you do? It's honestly like either having to go to the teacher who has the power to change things, which is what today's about, or you have to kind of like show them logic or threaten them or force them to like, okay, if you don't do this, we have to tell a teacher that you didn't do it, so it won't affect our grade. Or if you don't do this, we are all going to get a bad grade and it will be your fault. So having like a strong voice and being able to like express your um, your discontentment with having to deal with this person is usually enough to get them to do something or anything. Yeah. So is it almost like a negotiation? Yeah, usually. <laughs> because it's like, all right, if you do this, and do it well, we'll have a good grade. So like a promise of a reward based on their actions. And on the contrary, if you don't do anything, then 
there's a punishment involved. Exactly. It's like training a dog. Puppy, if you sit down and then you roll over, I'll give you food. That's It's the same exact thing. So you're calling Jimbo a dog? <laughs> well, the dogs do some creepy stuff. And apparently Jimbo is picking his nose. So. <laughs> At least he doesn't sniff poop, though. Well, you know, I'll, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> um, so this begs the question, is power prevalent in everything? Are there places where power isn't prevalent? There are places where it doesn't always matter. Like if you're hanging out with your friends on a Friday night and you're just goofing off playing games or um, just talking. Like, the simplest thing in the world. You don't need to have power then. You're just enjoying yourselves. But when something is dependent on how you carry yourself and how you do a job you were given, then power becomes a big aspect of what you're doing. Okay. Um, would you mind giving an example? Um, sure. So, like, imagine that you're a new teacher at school and you... <laughs> when students first see you... You're sweating and you're shaking and you're like rubbing your hands and you're stuttering and stuttering and no one's listening to you. You have already lost enough power that you will not be able to keep control of your classroom. Hmm. Whereas if you come into the first day, you're confident, you're well-dressed, everything's planned out and you're a nice person who can keep things in control, you will keep that power. Okay, so power is something you can gain and lose. In a heartbeat. Is it all about impression? It can be. Like, if you get into a fight and you're the one who wins, you've already gained power and status by beating a person who could be bigger than you or stronger than you or be a <laughs> have a bigger mouth than you. Um... Okay, so so it's not just impressions, but like characteristics that are known to be threatening or on the other hand, like charismatic. Okay, so, so I would like to dive deeper into this cycle of power. Like when you have, you said how you can gain power and lose power in a heartbeat. So... I want to think about scenarios here, if you will. What's can you run through all of the different scenarios? Like, consider this: like, you start with power and then you lose it. So how do you gain it back? Or you start with no power and then you gain it. Like different scenarios like that. Would you? Would you mind? Uh, sure. So like, I want to go back to the school thing because that's more relatable for the two of us, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so. Let's go back to like a new student. You have no power. You have no friends, no influence, no status, no nothing. People will make judgments on you based on how you look, how you act, how you comport yourself, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Ways that you can gain power are making friends with people that you think are influential. Or you could help someone with something that you normally wouldn't do. So like if they have like a big stack of books they need to carry, you could help them. Or just say, hi, how are you doing? And be nice to someone real quick. You will start gaining status. It's like, oh, hey, maybe this kid's not so bad. We should invite him over. And slowly, okay. you're going to be recognized as more of a charismatic person, a friendly person, instead of someone who just sits in the corner by himself, picking his nose like Jimbo. What about when you have power? Like, you, you nail the impression. You nail oh. the first impression. Everybody loves you. But then maybe you're too pompous or too arrogant, and they're like, oh, this guy is actually kind of an asshole. <laughs> so okay. let's distance from him. How can, you, what, how can you go through that redemption arc, if you will? Okay, so let's say that this new student has gotten all his power, and then in the middle of taking a test in math class, he farts. People going to make fun of him, and to stay away from him for a while it's not not be seen with this kid who just did something really weird and creepy 
Even Jimbo laughs. Even Jimbo laughs. I don't know why he gets that right to laugh. But there are always things you can do to like <laughs> gain that power back. Like, um, you could try and do something like funny or something like inspirational, and you will like slowly get back that power. Mm -hmm. But if you don't do something to <laughs> try and like overlap that memory of this kid farting during a math class, you're not going to get it back. It's like, you can't just, as soon as you get that power, you cannot just sit there and be silent and like, oh, I made it to the top, I'm done. If you do that, yeah. you are guaranteed to never get that power back. So is it like a constant regulation? Like, I have to make sure that I keep the power because I could lose it at any moment, or when you're at the bottom, it's like, I need to try to gain it. Like you're constantly working on yourself to keep this power essentially. Exactly. Because no one wants to like sit in the back of the classroom alone doing all the stuff by themselves. That is depressing. And it just, it does not look right for a human being to <laughs> basically be willfully ignorant of people around them and think it's okay. Yeah. What what would you say would be best for someone like that to, like, what steps could they take? Because, you know, it's one thing to say, like, come on, you got to get into shape. You got to do all of these things to be a confident stud, <laughs> lack of a better word. Um, but, you know, they're at the bottom, if you think about it. So. They can't just hear like, oh, yeah, be confident. Like, what are the steps you can take? Well, I kind of imagine it as like someone who is like afraid of putting themselves out there. It's like it's not just about being confident and walking up to the coolest person in school and like being, hey, you should be a friend with me. That's not going to work. They're going to think you're weird. <laughs> you have to. Um, you got to find someone who. Like, you could give me... Blah, 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 blah. This alone kid could find someone who is also alone and make friends with them and slowly, like, make their own group. Mm -hmm. And that way you start becoming more confident, you'll gain more power at these people, and you'll slowly learn what you should be doing to get more friends and stuff like this. Like, okay, that's... I don't think you should be, like, making friends to gain power, but it's like... Learn like a natural power. It's not like you're exploiting or doing something. Yeah. It's like it's not trying to like override someone or make or force your opinions down their throat. It's more like, okay, this worked to get to get these people to want to be with me and I've gained the power with them to like not be dismissed. Yeah. It's like you're just learning lessons and basic growth, but we're describing that through power because there's a natural power dynamic right. like power can be a very a very harsh sounding word because when we think about power we usually think of tyranny or like you know like a dictator or like an absolute monarch like somebody who uses his power for bad or for like the lack of interest in people that they rule over. But really, if you think about it, power is just a neutral concept. All it is is influence over one another. It doesn't mean you're superior. It just means in one regard, it's like a confident person is more powerful in terms of confidence and influence via that regard over somebody else who's less confident. But that doesn't mean that the more confident person is superior. Nobody's superior than anyone else because these are just, you know, you can't compare people because this guy might be the most confident guy in the world, but the guy who's less confident might literally know the solution to curing cancer. Like he could be that smart. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not like having power to influence others, like I said. There's like there's different kinds of power. What we've been talking about so far is like influential power, mm -hmm. but there is also like kind of power. Or like personally, 
I'm not the most charismatic person. People say, like, I have, like, <laughs> a face that, like, in the morning is scary. And that's probably true. Like, but... resting, uh... <laughs> Never mind. Keep going. But at the same time, I'm also this person who, if I like you, I will be friendly. I will help you. I'll do everything I can to make sure that you're not being... Uh, what's the word? Like, you're not being trodden on or stuff like that. Yeah. I'm also I'm like the person who has the knowledge to improve a person's day mm -hmm. versus someone who's going to use their power to like make fun of someone else or make someone else like a cast off. Okay, that's a good example, especially in regards to how we define power as neutral. You can use your influence and your abilities like from your knowledge of knowing, all right, if I say this thing, I will brighten someone's day. But if I say this, it'll make them cry or something. You have the power to basically change your reality in that regard. Like, do you want to make a more positive influence on someone or do you want to be an asshole? Exactly. Everyone has that power to make someone feel better or feel worse or to change something that they don't like in the world at the moment. It's yeah. just having the willpower to get off your butt and do something. That's an interesting word. How does willpower fall under this? I mean, it combines two words, will, like a desire, and power. So willpower is having the desire to get something done. Like, I have the willpower to <laughs> smack my brother in the face sometimes, but I'm not going to do it because I also have the self-control not to. I have the willpower to do all these different things that I want to get done. Whereas if it's really hot outside and the grass needs mowed and I just feel tired i don't have the willpower to get that done okay that's interesting because i've always thought of willpower as like a more profound description of will and desire like i have the willpower to get up in the morning which is like a profound it's a profound thing like the fact that i wake up every morning with a good attitude of like, I'm going to take on the day that, you know, that's just bigger than I have the willpower to mow the lawn today. But I like that you said that because I guess willpower could be either. Am I correct on that? You're right. Yeah. Okay. It's, I don't know. I've just always seen it as that grand thing, but really, I guess the way you defined it is basically what it is it's just your will to get something done or to do something exactly. how does that relate to the power we've been talking about well like i said there's gonna be like these shy kids who don't want to talk or the new person who's just content to make his own bubble and just go through the year and be done mm -hmm. but the people who have the willpower to go and make friends and to try and be someone that has a higher willpower so they <laughs> i'm getting off track here people with a higher willpower will go out and they'll do something so they won't sit there and be content with their lot in life okay so is willpower almost like i mean a lot of the power we've been talking about is a very interpersonal thing like a uh, constant but is willpower like power within yourself? Yes. And if it's too low, then nothing will get done. Is there a cycle inside yourself of like, maybe I'm not powerful. Maybe I am powerful. That's more like a personal psychology, I guess. So... <laughs> yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty complex. So hopefully everybody can follow along. But what were you saying? So I see it as people who are surrounded by those who like talk down to them or think that they're not good enough and will insult them, they probably have a lower willpower and thus a lower desire to like put themselves out there. Whereas someone who makes friends with encouraging people will have their willpower boosted and they'll go out and they'll 
be their own person. Okay, that makes sense. But even still, it's like that ties back to the interpersonal idea of power. Like your individual feelings, your willpower, as you put it, is affected by outer sources, like the people you're around, your friends, your family, everybody. Yeah, it's hard to imagine like a circ- or a, a scenario where like you're not being affected by the forces around you. Like unless you're a hermit living in the middle of nowhere, like the only thing you have to worry about is the weather and how much food you have. And that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about like these big social circles and how you can put yourself out there and be a better person than you are now. Yeah. So I know this might be a a curveball or counterintuitive because we've been talking about it the whole video, but unfortunately this part got cut out. But what I basically asked was, why does power matter and does it matter? And Joseph responds to an extent, but some of it was cut out. So I'll leave the parts that are still in, but he basically talks about the idea of independence and dependence. So here. Say it does matter because like, again, there's an aspect of like, like having the power over someone else and then it directly relates to the other. And if you are affected too. So it's like that independent, dependent thing you learn in what, sixth grade? In, in all circumstances, it does matter how much you want to affect things. Okay. So it matters because it's a driving force. Yes. And that makes a lot of sense if you think about it. Like when you think about power, it really just is that driving force because why do people want to become rich and successful or just successful in general because they want power and not just like again the uh they don't want to be a politician necessarily who has literal power over the country or a state but it could be somebody who just owns a nice house or lives in a nice area and they have more let's say they're more fiscally uh intact so it's not like they have power over everybody but they have power over their lives and when you have more financial freedom it's like oh okay i can i can do more of what i want and i have the power to do so versus if i didn't try hard or work hard or even have that willpower ambition to get ahead in life you might be stuck with a less powerful situation where you don't have those freedoms yeah and in a sense uh, wait sorry you you go yeah it's really all it is is just like wanting something better than what you have that's the whole idea of a hierarchy why do you want to be the most popular kid in school why do you want to get with the cool kids why do you want to be the teacher's pet it's all for some kind of reward or almost like the grass is greener on the other side, but hopefully we can get to the other side where the grass is greener. Exactly. Is that a blind faith, or does it have merit? I wouldn't call it blind faith. You see stories every day about how people will pull themselves up by their own bootstraps and make things better. <laughs> the bootstraps. I, I always laugh whenever I hear that. I know that it's true, but like, I don't know, it's just funny to me. Uh, but yeah, go on. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, all it is is like having the ability to get up and do something and make it better. Yeah. And I guess it also falls under your, your own values of like what that better entails. Like maybe you want to, maybe you want to help the environment. Like playing your part to, maybe you create an organization that helps with recycling or something with your ultimate goal or ambition to help the planet. Or maybe you care about animals. So you volunteer at an animal shelter or I don't know, you know, like it's all about what you care about and that influences why you would want power, why it just influences your incentives. Yeah. So if you have something that you truly, 
something you truly care about, and you have the ability to affect it, then you should. Like, if you truly care about it, you should already have the willpower to change it, and you should. There's no excuse not to. What could be an actual excuse not to? I don't know. Uh, personal injury, uh, some kind of family crisis. Like, there are, okay, there are things that can get you out of anything. Like, your dog died, and you had to take a vacation day to mourn. Okay, yeah. that's fair, and you can have it. But when you refuse to do something because you're like, oh, I don't know, I just don't feel like it today, or something something so silly or inconsequential that you just kind of get this, like, bug-eyed look, like, why is that supposed to affect what you're supposed to be doing? Yeah. And it's... uh you know, it's also interesting when you just talk about incentives and drive to begin with. Um, and I guess this kind of ties back to the motivational video that I did um, with Sakani. And I don't know, drive is interesting because it's one thing to have drive. It's one thing to have ambition. It's one thing to have a dream. But you also have to put in the effort for it. Like you need discipline and you also need to reinstate your goal and your purpose so you don't lose track of it. Yeah, people who assume that what they want will just happen to them, I cannot understand what goes through their heads because I have never, ever had something just magically happen like, I don't get to just will something into existence. If I could, I'd be God, and that'd be great. But I know <laughs> it's not going to happen. So I have to, again, put myself on my bootstraps and get it done. So in terms of you personally, what what is that? that or what do you aspire to do that requires you to grab, the, grab yourself by the, the, the bootstraps? Well, right now, it's mostly, like, getting my grades up for school and being able to get into a good school later on and get a good house, good job, good family, all that usual American dream stuff. But And that's all about power, right? It is. Yeah. Because you know that if you get this done, you will, one, know that you have the mentality to get it done. Two, you'll have the opportunity to get it done. And three, that you don't have to... um rely on others or like I don't know what to say you don't have to wait for someone to help you well, you're, you're independent exactly and I guess altogether independence is power that's like the definition of power because you call the shots it is human nature tells us that at some point we have to like cut off the umbilical cord go out on our own and try and succeed. If you don't try, you've got a massive problem. Yeah. And also, when I think about independence, it's like, think about children and everything, like how they are dependent on their parents. And by that definition, parents have power. But it's like, they don't, in a sense, I guess you could think of it like they're not assigned to a role. It's not like a position like CEO where they literally have power over you. But the fact that they provide everything for you, the shelter, the food, even things like entertainment or something, like the luxury aspects, even if they're not required to human survival, because they provide those things, it's like a natural power they hold over you. Yeah, parents could put the fear of God in you in a second. Well, if you don't do this, I'm taking your Xbox, and you can't do nothing about it. That will get you moving <laughs> faster than anything in the world. Right, because you don't want to lose your privileges, essentially. Yeah, no one, wants to, no one wants to have less than they have right now. That's just, It's not human nature. It's not standard. It's, it doesn't make sense. Right. Unless, I guess unless it's in a selfless act, I guess. Yeah, that can't happen, but it is rare these days. I mean, I'm not talking about, like, losing your Xbox. It's like, I'm going to be a noble kid for doing the wrong thing and losing my Xbox. But I, I'm talking, like, 
I don't know, selfless acts like like volunteer work, as I mentioned earlier. Like that's physical manual labor for a cause that you don't really directly benefit from, but you help somebody else or something else. Like um I remember uh I don't think we did it last year because of COVID, but we would basically have a routine every Christmas time that we would donate dog food to SPCA. And it's like, there's no actual, there's no extrinsic incentive behind that. It's not like we're donating dog food so that, you know, they can write our name on a list so we can get praise in the community, or they're not like giving us a reward, like a trophy or a medal or, or even money, but we're just doing it because it helps the dogs. You know? Yeah, that's fair. Um, I know, like, in the past years, like, I have gone with my family, like, the Matthew 25 Ministries in Ohio, mm -hmm. and just helped out in any way we could. And when you leave, your hands will smell like soap for the next three days, but you will have this feeling that you've done something good. And it encourages yeah. you to go out and do more. Yeah, it's that good feeling that it reinstates your willpower. Yeah, because like it's very strange to want to go out and do this and then all of a sudden you're like nope not for me i'm going to skip it next time it just it feels wrong to invest so much time and energy into doing something you're caring about and then all of a sudden just backpedal right it's like why not just go all the way then so let's get back to power i mean this obviously relates to willpower and drive and incentive and that's like one of the biggest things with power. Everybody wants to have power, whether it's status or whatever else. Um, how can we, here's something. How can we deal with someone who has power over us where we can't exactly like flip the tables, but how do we deal with that? Like when they're using power for wrong? Uh, well, <laughs> I'm thinking about like TV at the moment, but like you could find out people that they've been like abusing their power against, <clears throat> find them, unite them, and they can either like talk to someone who has power over that person or try and like deal with the problem themselves. Like you always heard about this, like in pop culture and stuff like that. Or you can sit down with the person and have like a one-on-one -on -one talk. Okay, why are you doing this? Why do you feel the need to abuse the power you have and make my day worse? Right. Like just a full-on confrontation. Yeah. It, like, it doesn't have to be a violent confrontation. I'm not talking about like Star Wars spaceship battles and space switchers with laser swords. I'm talking about just like a human connection. Right. Or, like, you're just being honest with them. You're not making it, like, a scary, like, I'm going to confront you and we're going to in interrogate each other. Like, you're just like, hey, man, like, why are you why are you doing this to me? Like, let's talk about this. Yeah, because more often than not, you'll be able to, like, come to an understanding and the problem will stop. If you can't, right. that's when you need to get other people involved and do our thing in your power to make this person stop. Because you don't want to, uh, if you're trying to make your day better, you don't want to f impose your will on someone else because mm -hmm. it makes you feel better. That's really strange. I'm talking about just trying to, like, take a weight off of your shoulders. Yeah. That way it would be a good measure. And um, like you said, it's if somebody's causing you problems, you can get people who have higher power than them to kind of clap down on them. Exactly. Just about everyone in the world will answer to someone higher up than them. I know that if I am with my brothers and I do something bad, he's going to go to my mother and I'm going to get the crap she got of me. And that's <laughs> that's because I deserved it. Yeah. Um. So this kind of moving on again, 
I remembered this topic that I wanted to discuss with you. Let's consider like debate and arguments, like specifically and the power dynamic with that. So what I've noticed, and this will kind of kickstart the conversation, um, I've noticed that the questioner, when you're in a debate with you and another person, the questioner always holds the power because they ask the questions and they're not put on the defensive to answer. So how, if you're the person receiving the questions, how can you flip the power? Be quick on your feet. If you're well informed and you know what you're talking about, then there will always be like a weakness you can exploit in the questioner because there may be some piece of information they have not heard or some aspect they haven't considered. Mm -hmm. And if you're able to find that and exploit it, you can turn those tables back around and look like the winner. Okay. That's a good idea. Um, what if you're not quick on your feet? Um, you could ask a question in return. I've seen this before, like, and like, arguments other people, they'll, like, act like the victim and ask a person why they're doing this terrible, terrible thing in their opinion, and they'll f ask them a question. Why do you believe this is so terrible? Because a lot of times it's like a human overreaction. Yeah. So <laughs> there's always like a way to like turn it against someone and like steer the conversation your way. If you have like the willpower to do it, if you shrink back and tell yourself like a turtle because you're afraid of what they're asking you, yeah. one, you're not going to win, two, you'll lose the respect you have, and three, you will lose all power in a conversation. Right. Although it makes me wonder, like, what is the true purpose of debate? Because I've entered debates in the past of just like people... Usually it starts because somebody starts asking me questions and then I'm put on the defensive. But I've always, especially recently, I've noticed that like when they're pounding me with questions, in my head, I started to think, okay, what is this debate really about? Because any time that I'm, and you know, to confess, I'm not the most on my feet, I guess. Not all the time, at least. So and an example that I'm thinking of, like I was kind of shrimpish, like you said, like I was a little vulnerable. Um, but, you know, they were pounding me with questions and I couldn't really answer because every time I began, uh, there was another question posed. But then that's when I started wondering when, like, what is this really about? And I feel like when you truly understand a debate and I'm not talking about like a like a formal debate for school or like a debate on TV that's literally meant for viewers to kind of make the judgment rather than the people on TV changing their minds. Um, but most of the time when it's just you on the playground and somebody's like challenging your beliefs or something, it's like, is this really about content or is this really about winning or losing? It's just power. That's all it is. It's exactly how you described it. It's like somebody's going to be the turtle who lose, who's shameful and loses his pride. And some guy's going to be the victorious winner who everybody loves. But when you think about a debate, isn't it about the content? It usually is. Now, this is like, okay, let's just exclude presidential debates now because those are more comedy than they are anything else. Mm -hmm. But when you think about like, a philosophical question like this was another part that got left out or cut out i'm not really sure what happened but joseph explains the scenario of a moral dilemma where somebody needs to steal from let's say a bakery a loaf of bread from a baker um to support his family so the moral question is should he steal it because his family needs the food or is that wrong because he's taking uh, the product of the baker and he needs the money to supply for his family? So we just kind of discussed this moral dilemma. Very different 
and it comes it it all comes down to really everything like your predisposition like where you came from or how you were raised it's like you might not like that example specifically about would you steal the bread you might have a different answer depending on where you are in life like if you were raised poor and it was hard to find a job or something you're probably more likely to think it's righteous to steal the bread for your family but if you were let's say you're the son of a business owner or you are a business owner or i don't know you just anything else like that you might view it like don't steal from them because they're trying to make a living and feed their family you see how that kind of plays a role yeah it's all circumstantial it's like how how you were raised what your your financial situation your your um, surroundings like if you're in a rich neighborhood and you're hungry your kid's hungry so you just grab it and you walk out okay no no no. you're not starving you have the time to pay for it do it right but if it's like <laughs> the 1300s your family's sick with tuberculosis and you can't do anything then then it might be okay well it's not okay but it's necessary so you then it. it poses the question as a question wait what like then it becomes a, a question you know like rather it's just oh yeah that's definitely right or wrong it's like that that's when it becomes a gray area yeah, you can't make a blanket assumption based on your experiences because your experiences are yours and yours alone. Right. You have to make different observations for different people. Yeah. So I guess we can talk about that. Like we mentioned predisposition, like how you were raised, where you were raised, by whom, basically everything that goes into the manifestation of yourself, who you are, what you are. And when you're born, you're born into a specific status, I guess. I mean, you could think of like socioeconomic class and everything like that. Like your parents, their care for you, um, how authoritarian or permissive they are, like every single factor. But when you're born, you're born with a certain amount of power. Is yeah. that power constant throughout your life? No, outside, outside forces will always be able to like change it. So, like if you're already living in like a really rundown house with parents who are struggling, mm -hmm. and then a tornado comes by and it tears the house apart, well, you've just lost power. Whereas yeah. if the same situation, the poor family, the rundown house, and your parents suddenly get a brand new job that pays for all this amazing stuff. Well, hey, your power just went up. So, like, it's always changing on this massive scale, and the smallest thing can throw it off. But isn't a lot of it internal, too? Like, your own actions? Yeah, that is true. Like, you can always do something stupid to people around you, and you have lost the power. Like, if you're the most famous person at school, and you punch a kid in the wheelchair, well... You lost that power. Don't be surprised when the entire school hates you for what you just did. And right. good luck getting it back. Well, I meant on a grander scale. Like, can you... Like, isn't it all about your internal actions to get yourself out of poverty or to continue a life of luxury? Like, yeah. when, wherever you're born, can you change? You can always change. It's like, okay... If you're able to recognize that what you have right now is not good enough and you have the ability to do more, then do it. Mm -hmm. Like, if you're a 14 year old kid who has little to no money, well, if you have a bike and a paper route, well, then you can make money. Like, there's always the ability to go out and do something to make your life better. But we come back to that willpower aspect where if you don't do it, it's not going to get better. That's true. And there's always something you can do. It's like, if you want money, look into a job. Like, it doesn't have to be like, oh, be a paper boy. But, you know, you could go into town, look at the bulletin board and 
see, oh, now uh, help wanted or something. Okay, probably you would get an offer on your phone. That was a really boomer way of explaining that, but you know what I mean. There's always some way that you can change your life with the incentive to do more and to really just gain more, gain more knowledge or whatever it is. You'll have the power to learn, the power to earn more money, the power to change the forces around you. It just really comes down to how much do you want this and what are you willing to risk to get it? Right. That's interesting risk. It's like when you, are you willing to risk everything for what you desire or what you hope for? That in itself is able to like take people for a loop again, because if you don't want to lose everything you already have, it's like if you had worked since you were little to get this nice house, beautiful car, beautiful home, and you have everything that you have wanted since you were little in a rundown house with poor parents, would you be willing to risk it for something better? Or would you be content with your lot in life and just say, I'm happy? Right. Well, at that point, you have to consider the risks. It's like, it might not be necessarily if I fail, then I lose everything. But that that can also be the case. Yeah, more often than not, it's not everything. But <laughs> if you only make a few dollars a week and you spend it on lottery tickets, which I've seen more often than you can count because I worked at a grocery store for a year, uh, then <laughs> you can't really truly believe that it will get better because you are risking all the money you make in a week on the chance that you <laughs> like a one in a billion chance you make this lump sum of cash. It's not going to happen. <laughs> Maybe though. <laughs> yes, the one in a billion chance. Now I'm a realist and I know it's not going to happen to me, so there's no point. Right. Um but it's also interesting when you hear of people who take a risk and succeed. Like I remember uh or you've heard the story of game developers where they're like and I'm talking like Small game developers, not like a big corporation like Microsoft, Sony, or Nintendo, but like, you know, like one to three men working on one video game. And then because they need all the money they can get, they have to like remortgage their houses and everything extreme like that. But then the game does super well after that. Yeah. So one story I've already heard is... um the creator of the Skyrim game that everyone loves right now. Mm -hmm. That story in itself is amazing because it was just these two artists and needed a writer. And this guy came in and he thought he was just going to be writing like ads for the game, which is not true. He ended up writing an entire story for that first video game. And then Mm -hmm. for games one through three, it was the same people slowly getting a bigger studio and building and building and building until slowly you had the most popular game of 2012. Ta-da! Okay, so you meant the Elder Scrolls series and Skyrim's the fifth one. Yeah. So like okay. it's it all started with this crazy idea to make an arena game. And for whatever reason the game was called Arena, but there was not an arena. So yeah. <laughs> it's like it's just it's this massive risk of how much time, energy, and money you spend how much you do to like risk it all in this yeah and they're still selling these these copies of skyrim and everything grand theft auto 2 it's like it was on playstation 3 then ps4 then ps5 now like (laughs) it's a meme at this point because it's like stop selling these games again like come on this was released in 2012 it is, and like these games, like I know we're focusing on this song, where I got one more left. The Mortal Kombat series, one of my favorite things ever. My mom used to play it when she was growing up. Huh. Incredibly bloody, incredibly gory, and it's all centered around this 2D street fighting mayhem. When it first came out, the government wanted to ban it. 
So these people had just taken a massive risk, created a massively popular game, and then all of a sudden, gone. Because it was too inappropriate. Because it was too inappropriate for children. So, <laughs> very long story later, the ESRB is formed, which is like the video game rating company. Yeah. And <laughs> Mortal Kombat is made these very mature games. So, it was a huge risk, but in the end it paid off. Right. Also, I don't think the earlier ones had blood, did they? Oh, they did. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Fair enough. So, yeah. Um, since we're uh, kind of heading closer to the end of this episode, do you? what is the main takeaway from this from power um well we talk about a lot so it's like i can think about that principle part of like the independent and the dependent variables yeah um find a way to boost your willpower and i don't mean like a video game way or you pick up a token and we i'm stronger no I level up you find people that you agree with who will encourage you you get your willpower up and then you go out and you work on what you want like find your your passion exactly find what you are fighting for all this time because there's got to be something that you want enough to go out and get right and there's always something there's so many things in this world there's got to be something for everybody exactly it could just be a nice house it could be a better car it could be (laughs) Just like a computer. The simplest thing in the world. It could be a new... girlfriend. Yeah, good luck with that. It could be... (laughs) It could be just like a jacket when you're little. So you do your chores, you save, and you get it. Yeah. There's always going to be something worth fighting for. So get up and do it. Amen. And with that, thanks so much for joining me, man. Yeah, I had fun. Yeah, I did too. Uh, I feel like we talked about a lot of good things. This wasn't necessarily talking about authority, although we touched on it a little bit, just because, you know, you kind of have to when you're talking about power. But I don't know, a lot of great stuff. So I hope you all enjoyed listening, and I'll see you guys next time.